going on, people? We're back. Beautiful sunny day, too. What is it, like 74 degrees? Damn, it's nice. On my way to Lowe's. These pieces of shit. I'm supposed to... I'm in the middle of the renovation right now. I'm not supposed to get my oven delivered today. And these pieces of shit delivered me an oven that was tore up. All bashed up. You know? God delivery guys that pick it up, obviously they didn't know that. But once they got here, I'm not a happy person. But I gotta go into town anyway to take care of something. So instead of talking on the phone, I'm just gonna go into Lowe's and uh, have a little conversation with them. Cause I need my shit. Try to get things done, wait my wait and send their wait what, a couple minutes? What, a couple hours? For no reason. But off that, this little dude, Timothy Bradley, went into a, a back and forth with Andre Ward about who pound for pound number one, the number one fighter in the world is. And the philosophy in Bradley's head is that Terrence Crawford is number one pound for pound right now, he's undisputed. And that by beating Luke Campbell, that's putting him into a space where he should be considered pound for pound number one. And definitely, if he gets goes undisputed, he definitely should be ranked as pound for pound number one, the best fighter in the world. You know, because, quote, oh, he will have done something in the weight class that hadn't been done since uh, Pernell Whitaker did it. Well, Pernetica Williams was also the last person to be undisputed at 140 pounds. You know, something that Terrence Crawford did quite a while ago now. You know, and so it's like the things they wouldn't give Terrence Crawford credit for doing and his respect for doing and solidify him as the best fighter in the world for doing. Now, years later, <laughs> Lomachenko does it. All of a sudden, he's the greatest fighter in the world. And they want to call this dude an all-time great for what? Like, what has this dude done? It's like, when you get labels like that put on you, you got to earn those, man. It ain't what you think somebody is, what you think they can do. You got to put in that work and earn those spots. And that's clearly something that he hasn't done. And beating the likes of a Campbell, who's seen get beat up by, you know, lose to Linares, you know, that, that that doesn't do it. <laughs> that doesn't do it. You know, and Bradley's thing was like, well, who's he facing now? Who's Bradley? Who's who's Terrence Crawford facing next? Mean Machine? Like, shit, who's Lomachenko facing next? Lenares? What's it called? Uh, Campbell? Who's he facing after that? What, the likes of, uh, what? Of a Lenares? Who had seen get stopped on multiple occasions previously? And that's who you're going life and death with? Pedraza, who we've seen Tank systematically just obliterate and stop. You know, I mean, you know what I mean? It's a shame, man. Like, seeing somebody that has been as successful as he was in the boxing game and um, has made good money, yet they want to, I guess you could say, chuck and jive. You know, to make certain, you know, others happy. It's, 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 it's embarrassing, to be honest. It's real, real, real embarrassing to even see it go down the way that it goes down when it comes to that man. Um, regardless of what he says, you beating the likes of Campbell doesn't make you pound for pound number one. You have to do extraordinary, extraordinary shit to take that spot away from Terrence Crawford got to do extraordinary, extraordinary shit to do something like that. You know what I'm saying? Ramirez is up there waiting for you, still calling you out, man. You can still take that fight on, man. You know, the Ruguru fight, because he's going to knock that boy out, base facing Taylor. They fight it, you know, you can fight that. You know, then you're going becoming undisputed against killers. You know, because you weren't pushing hard to go against Easter when he was at 134. He was a 135 pound champion. You weren't going hard to push at Mikey. You started going hard after Mikey when you learned that he was going to fight 
um, doing negotiations to fight against Earl Spence, and all of a sudden now you wanted to fight him. When before uh, Top Rank was talking about, oh no, we're gonna have, you know, we're gonna give him one offer if he takes, if he doesn't take it and F him. You know, and the offer was also was never sent. When he was up on you on ESPN talking about, yo, let's fight, let's fight, you people talking about, nah. There's always no with this guy. When it came to fighting Mikey, when he was down to fight, it was nah, not now, blah, blah, blah. When it came to fighting Earl Spence, Earl Spence, not Earl Spence, Terrence Crawford, 137 pounds, it was no. When it came to fighting Manny Pacquiao at any weight, it was no. When it came to fighting Ramirez, it's no. It's always, when it comes to those killers, when it comes to those hard fights, it's always no with this guy, you know? Why didn't he try to, you know, unify the 126 pounds? When you had Gary Russell pick up the WBC championship and you beat him in a majority decision. Why not? Why don't you unify? Why don't you rematch with him to get that WC belt? You know, try to fight against a Santa Cruz. Put up the money or be willing to go into that platform. You already faced Gary Russell. We know Gary Russell would have faced you again. Why didn't you try to unify with him? You know? Went to 130, didn't try to unify with anybody over there. Now you got this easy, what seems to be an easy, breezy route to uh, undisputed at 135 pounds. Now you want to go for undisputed. You know? It's a shame, man, with boxing, man, where some people have to, regardless of how much they do, the bar keeps getting raised, keep getting raised. Doesn't matter how much or even a Floyd Mayweather did moving up not only to his weight class but moving up above him not up to his not even up to his his walk around weight but he fought above his walk around weight when he weighed in at 150 pounds on fight night when he fought at 154 eating drinking everything in the morning full stomach full of food in the morning before he weighed in you know and still that wasn't enough you expect him to go all the way to 160 pounds but then it comes to other fighters like a Lomachenko he literally could lay on the ground stick his head up a little bit and he's reached the pinnacle of greatness it's terrible man it's a shame and it's something that in boxing that needs to stop you know but with guys like this even when they try to maneuver around even when they try to you know stay away from those killers something just always accidentally pops up into their face that they didn't expect you know and they end up on their backs or slumped up on their face. So that time is coming for him as well. And Tank Davis said he wants his boy in 2020. So when Tank starts going hard at this dude trying to fight him, I just ran a red light. I don't see no cops though. Damn, they got cameras now too. Shit, man. See what y'all got me into, man? Some bullshit, you know. But yeah, man. What happens to all of them will happen to them too. You know, when they started pushing Shu Shimming, saw what happened to him. When they were pushing uh, Chocolito, <laughs> we saw what happened to him. When they tried to push in uh, Kovalev, we saw what happened to that. So, you know. We'll see what happens with this dude. What happened to Ripper G? Wasn't he supposed to be the greatest since Hagler and him too? What happened to him? Yeah. So it's all good. But of course, when that happens, he's going to be, his, oh, he's too old. Oh, he was too small for his weight class. For the weight class he was fighting in. That's why it happened to him. Yeah, okay. But we shall see. But it doesn't matter what happens tonight when, this, when these two fight. It's absolutely nothing. This will not solidify you as pound pound the best fighter in the world. If this solidifies you as the best fighter in the world, then Tank Davis is the greatest fighter ever. Period.